yourselves. Clap for her. All right. So we have some awesome speakers beginning with Adria Richards. Adria uh, has been in the Bay Area, an engineer since 1998. She's going to talk a little bit about a topic we all want to hear about, why te technology companies um, aren't or are bringing women and female engineers into their companies. <laughs> Adria, come on up. How's everyone doing? You had a good lunch? You've been networking? Excellent. So yes, today I'm going to talk about an issue that is affecting every single startup in the Bay Area. Right? Now, there are different viewpoints on what that problem is, but in the end, it's about building a successful company, right? And uh, one important aspect of that is finding developers to fill all of these countless jobs that are being reported. Any job board you go to, right? Thousands of jobs. Uh, and what employers are doing is they're saying, we really need to look outside the US. We're unable to find these people. According to the US Department of Labor, you know, being a software developer, it's gonna look good for the next you know, 10 to 20 years, right? Uh, faster than average growth. Uh, most jobs are growing at about maybe 11%, but you see here it's well over 20%. So today, there are more than 3 billion people on the internet. That's actually more um, people uh, than folks who um, don't actually have clean water. Uh, there are 1.1 billion people in the world without access to clean water. So we actually have more people on the internet, right? <clears throat> this means there's a lot of opportunity. Now, you've probably seen this hockey stick. When people go about planning their startups and they have these visions, they think it's pretty easy, right? You bring together people who are great at what they do, you have an idea, you get traction, and the rest is history. But it's not always that easy. Where are the developers? And uh, <laughs> thanks, Steve Ballmer. Uh, so with that said, again, there's all this discussion. Oh, we can't find them. They're not here. Uh, they, they don't have the right skill set. On and on and on, right? We need to get visas for people to come from other countries. All this stuff. But I want to talk about what developers want. And we're going to focus on women, but it turns out that a lot of the things that women want in the workplace are very similar to what men want in the workplace. Uh, and this is actually a talk that'll be part of a three-part series I'm doing. So this first part will be addressing how to attract developers. So 84% said, um, when asked about what's important to them in the workplace, uh, knowing that I'm helping to make a positive difference in the world is more important to me than professional recognition. And this study was done uh, with a group of millennials uh, by Bentley University, right? So next thing I want to talk about here is offer competitive pay and equal salaries for all genders. I think that's really going to be a base thing for attracting good talent. One of the mistakes that companies are making is they're not realizing there's this entire passive market of very talented people. Those people aren't looking for jobs. They're working at their jobs right now. So how can they get access to those people? I have some ideas about that. There was a study done, and the study wanted to figure out if maybe people who were scientists or academics were less biased than other people in the world when it came to gender. So they uh, contacted and did the study with 127 professors. They had them look at a set of applications and the only thing that was different was the gender. Man's name, woman's name. They asked them to rate them on how hireable they would be, uh, if they thought they were competent for the job, what they thought their salaries should be, and how much mentoring they thought that person would need. Uh, unfortunately, it turns out that both the male and female professors uh, not only rated the men higher in competency, but that same thing applied uh, for salary. Uh, the gap was significant for the study, which is troubling, but I think it also helps us realize that this is not about the other person or the other holding us back. We ourselves need to realize that we all are carrying some bias with us and be aware of that so as we you know, communicate and work with each other, we address it. Now, according to all the studies, women are earning more than ever, right? We are getting closer to parity with men. That's great, but there are also studies showing that in the Bay Area, 
women are making as little as 49 cents on the dollar that men are making. So why is that happening? It turns out um, there is a study that was done. They this time interviewed um, graduates from Harvard Business School and asked, you know, what, what do you think women care about? What do they prioritize? And it turns out, again, a majority of men and women both believe that women prioritize family over work. This study was done about 20 years ago, and those same views are still being reflected, but they're actually not true. So I, I really like this part here. Uh, serenade geeky women and men with your code. And here we're going to talk about a couple of ideas, right? Rather than throwing out job postings and sponsoring events, I do want to talk about sponsoring events. Companies think, well, if we just put some money towards this organization that supports women in tech, the women will want to apply and work at our company. What they're basically expecting is a transfer of trust to happen. And it's not that simple, right? And plus, developers are shy. You know, we're like deer. Like, you have to lure us, like, to where you want us to go. Um, we're, we're always kind of shy and, you know. So I have a couple ideas here, things I've seen that companies are doing well. If you have a startup, you should have a separate blog just for developers, just for engineers, where you talk about your technology, your hardware, the upgrades, how you're scaling your databases. This is what geeks care about. This is what impresses them, right? It's uh, not how many uh, pogo sticks you have or how many free meals. Of course, those are nice. But if you want to attract them, they need to know what you're working with, right? I think that it's also very powerful for startups to focus on sending people to conferences to give technical talks rather than sponsoring those conferences. You're more likely to attract good talent. Another thing, have open source projects out there. There are aspects that you could publish if you're a startup, whether those are libraries, modules, uh, you could have all sorts of challenges. I've seen a lot of creative stuff. Twilio has been extremely successful at doing this. Uh, not only do they have a number of open source projects, uh, at a point in time in their company, they were actually running monthly contests, right? And it's a great way to source talent. And again, I had to point to Twilio. This is a, a, a beautiful way that they've brought everything together. They have a blog post, which is kind of silly, but also technical, right? And that's tied to a tutorial which is tied to their open source repositories. This is a great way to figure out who is actually using uh, your technology and then go after them, right? You're gonna get a much higher qualified lead, male or female, with this than just uh, calling people, cold calling people, sponsoring events, and so on. Now this is also very troublesome for a lot of people, job descriptions. Who has seen a job description that looks like this? It's like super long. You have to have like eight to 10 years of everything. You have no idea what they want you to do on the job. You need all these things. Um, it kind of reminded me of, you know, those lists you used to make about your future boyfriend or girlfriend. <laughs> so, you know, here, here the young girl, she's like, um, must have nice handwriting. Uh, number 13, don't pick your nose. It has to be smart, all sorts of things, right? Can be a good cook. Um, quite a long list though, right? I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's what, third, nearly 30 items. So when employers do this, it, it, it's actually very discouraging, but it's especially discouraging, it's especially discouraging to women. So someone did something about it, at least as a start. Uh, Karen, um, I'm gonna mangle her last name, sorry, Karen. Uh, Shoelkoff created this site called Hire More Women in Tech. And it's, it's a long page with a lot of resources and links, but one aspect that I thought was very interesting and could really create a lot of impact quickly was the section uh, talking about wording of these job descriptions, right? How using masculine terms or aggressive terms can be off-putting for a lot of people, right? Not just women, men too, right? So instead of like, take over the world, instead using words like collaborate, right? Uh, innovate. Uh, there was a Twitter discussion that came out of this, which Karen links to, and people also expressed uh, interest in things uh, and job descriptions that focused on learning, um, contributing, and receiving recognition. And I think that's an important thing for a lot of people working in tech. We often 
do all these things that other people ask us to, we are often not acknowledged for those things that we keep running or that we build and we deploy. So anything you can do to make you know, a tech person feel awesome, they like it. Um, here's an example of a test I did uh, a couple months ago. I had done a, a talk at this company. We had a panel, it was very successful. And I thought, you know, how could I help them? And of course, everybody's hiring everyone, right? But I crafted this in a way to focus on developers who care about civic engagement. And as you can see, it got 18 retweets, uh, several favorites, and then people actually engaged as well, right? And if more companies did something like this, took the time to think about you know, what people care about, what do they find relevant, I think that they would attract a lot more great women and great developers overall. Unfortunately, there's this stereotype. If you're a woman, then you are new to tech, right? There are women who have been in tech for 30 plus years, right? As developers, it's not a new thing. But all of these aspects, like the job descriptions, <clears throat> some of the other things I'm gonna cover, it really doesn't help to attract those mid to senior level women. Because I think we all see most of the job descriptions want senior level this, senior level that, right? Um, that's, an, that's another aspect too I'll talk about in a minute is um, the willingness and ability to support mentoring uh, within your company. This is another opportunity for startups to fill all these open jobs they have, promoting from within. I was helping at a, a women, women tech event, and there was a woman participating from the company that was hosting it. And I said, what do you do here? And she said, I'm the accountant. And I thought, wow, isn't that amazing that she's working at a tech startup and she decided to spend her weekend learning to code. She works at a tech company, but will ever, anyone ever notice or give her the opportunity, right, to make, to make a transfer to a position that she would want to do, right? It's a huge opportunity. And, and again, I'm going to keep messaging this, but it's not just women who are often kind of, uh, I say, it's not only women that are discouraged or who become disinterested in your company, uh, if there are a lack of values, if the culture isn't being curated, um, but in some cases, uh, you know, if the company is not doing well, that shine kind of wears off, right? It was so exciting, you know, to work for said company, but where are they at now? Also, if you were having Issues in the press. Uh, yeah, people are, again, probably not going to consider applying at your company, no matter how much sponsorship you're throwing out there, right? So it's really important to ensure that your the experience matches. I got some music. Oh, are we, are we, oh. Okay, well, I will be wrapping up. <laughs> Okay, mentoring. Benefits for everyone. <laughs> Lifelong learning. Hooray! Okay. That's an elegant way to exit. You keep talking and moving, it's fantastic. <laughs>